Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sora and today I'm going to be answering questions that I was asked regarding my being a single mother. So let's go ahead and get started. These questions were sent to me on my Instagram, so a huge thank you to everybody who sent me a question. Without you all, this video would not be possible. If you are watching, feel free to write down any additional questions you have and leave them in the comments. And if you're not comfortable leaving them in the comments, feel free to go ahead over to my Instagram and send me a DM. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I'm very talkative, so let's see how this goes. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I set a timer. Question number one. When did you start putting product into your daughter's hair? I used the oils, you know, coconut oil really, until she was about 12 months old. And then around 12 months, I started putting J Moisture Kids. Now that she's 18 months, there is another product that I put into her hair, and it's a detangler that I like. It's Honey Nature, I believe. How do I keep my milk supply up? I had a lot of pumping. Now, first of all, I was blessed with a surplus of milk. I went back to school full time when my daughter was three weeks old. My supply did drop. What I did was drink mother's milk tea, which I will link in the bottom. And I also had lactation cookies. I'll link the ones that I bought. They're expensive, but they work. And my daughter did feed on demand while we were together until she was one years old. There was a lot of pumping though. And I hated my pump and I used to pump and cry and it was exhausting and it was not something I looked forward to in my day to be just 100% completely honest. What is my favorite thing she does? Gah! There is so many things. Okay, she busts out into dance, which is so beautiful to me. Like sometimes I'll be like, Zara, can you go get that? And she'll just, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Her laugh lights up my world every time. I would do anything to make her laugh. If she thought me breaking my neck was funny, I would break my neck. Another thing I love, when she'll like be playing and I'll look over and she's like cleaning stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? She'll be putting stuff away or she'll be doing the dishes. I think that's the cutest thing in the world because I'm like, do those dishes. She likes to wipe her nose, everything. She's such a big girl now. How do I relax when my life is so busy? So the key to this for me has been redefining my terms of relaxation and finding little pockets of peace throughout the day. Washing dishes is now relaxing to me because I don't have to think, it's repetitive, it's just something like um, my car rides now. When my daughter is not in the car, they're so peaceful to me. I really listen to children's music in front of my daughter only so I play my own music and I really take that time to breathe and be myself and be to myself. There's no one demanding anything from me. There's no homework I could be doing. There's no cleaning I could be doing. There's nothing I could be doing but living in that moment. And I love it. How has being a mom improved my life? I love this question and the answer is way too long. So I'm going to separate that into a different video. A second question I'm going to go on that video as well was what's the hardest part about being a single mom? And those two are going to go together because I feel like it's two sides to the same coin. How do you balance school life and mom life? And I really got this question a lot in various forms. There is so much to be done and it all needs to get done. And you need to realize that. So what's been key to me is realizing what needs to get done what needs to get done now and how much time I have to do. Understand what you can actually get done in this hour that you have, in this 30 minutes that you have. Complete as much as you can as you go so you don't constantly feel bogged down by responsibilities. So you can constantly check things off and say, I did that, I did that. Okay, okay, girl. Okay, you're doing it because you can do it. And you're doing it and you're going to do it and you're gonna keep doing it. My problem is I will have five hours worth of homework to do and I will have six hours worth of time. And I will say, oh, well, I don't wanna do my homework. So instead of doing that, let me clean this, let me clean that, let me make this shopping list, let me go do this. No, you need to really be disciplined and say, this is what needs to get done now. 
So it's really about prioritizing and then doing it. You have to hold yourself accountable. This is not a job. You're not checking in. You're not going to get fired. You need to get it done. And that's just, you know, really all it is to it. Priorities. Another thing that really helps me is making sure my daughter is always good first. Her lunch is packed. Her bag is packed for the day. Her diapers are good to go. She's stocked up on wipes because those are the things that cannot slip through the cracks. Do I have to eat today? Yes. If I do everything and forget to eat, I'm fine. She cannot forget to eat. I cannot forget her things at home when she needs to go to daycare, I need to go to class. So I always make sure I'm set to get out that door. And I always make sure prep work, that is so huge to me. I prep, everything in my house is a little prep station so that the days can flow more cohesively and everything can be smoother. I'm not constantly stopping and where's this and where's that and did I do this? Organization, baby, baby, it's gonna save your life. I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life. How do I handle the day-to-day -day things for myself while also providing for my baby at this age? This is a three-part question. They're asking about financially, spiritually, as well as like, what do I wanna do? My responsibilities. Ooh. Hi. Okay, so how do I handle things financially for her? There's a lot of sacrifice, but I am a scholarship recipient, which helps a lot. As far as living goes, I do have student loans out as well, since I cannot work full-time right now. And then when I'm not in school, I do work full-time every time. And the thing about that is I'll work full-time, I'll work overtime, and I will barely have enough money to pay for daycare. So then I'll pay for daycare, and this month I made 200 extra dollars. What do I do with those dollars? Put away what I can, buy my daughter new things because she needs new clothes, she needs more diapers, she needs things that toddlers need. I lean a lot on family and friends. That has been so huge to me. I have had to put my pride to the side, which is not something I did before having a daughter. And I have to reach out and say, look, my daughter needs this. She needs it. I can't provide it. That's embarrassing to me, but it's not. It does, why is it embarrassing? This is your situation. You're doing your best. You know, so that's something I had to get over. It's really a community effort. And it's really understanding. Like, I don't, I don't care about going to the club. I'll pay for that. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm never paying for any of that. So that's money saving right there. I don't buy makeup. I don't wear makeup really. I don't buy new items. I wait for holidays. And hope I've been good this year. And I wait for my birthday. And I wait for my daughter's birthday so she can get everything she needs. I don't buy her new toys. Another thing about the toys though, that's not just a financial thing. She doesn't need any more toys. Like, I don't want her to have a whole bunch of toys. Like, this is it. This She's maxed out. For her birthday, I'm asking for clothes. She's fine. Financially, it's really about understanding what you really need. And that's just the reality. It's fine. Like, it's, I mean, this is not forever. I'm going to get out of college. I'm going to get into my career. I'm going to be making money. I'm going to spoil myself one day. And I don't, I'm not really into material things anyway. I'm really into trips and living and let's go to brunch. That's the kind of person I am. For time management, that was the other part of this question. How do I do it with her and myself? It sort of ties into the previous question and really assessing needs versus wants. What do I want to do? Go on Instagram, go on Twitter, binge Netflix, binge Hulu. They have Flapjack on Hulu, honey. I love the misadventures of Flapjack, the marvelous misadventures. So it's really like, I understand, but you need to do this. So do this and do it with everything in you so it can hurry up and get done, get done right. And then if you have the time and then if you have the energy, then you do that. And I swear, like, I have to be that way. There's so much. I'm exhausted today, but I said I'm sitting down and doing this video. It's really about paying attention to what you should really focus your energy on and not making excuses for yourself. Like, I cannot. Like, if I make excuses, it's all gonna go downhill. Once you're behind, 
especially as a full-time student, I'm a biology major. Once you're behind, you're done. Drop out that semester. Like, come back next semester, start new. You can't fall behind. As a mother, you can't fall behind. She's not gonna wait on me, girl. Woo, honey. So that's how I manage. Spiritually, I have really changed my whole mindset. For me, I find spiritual peace in my surroundings. So I keep my home clean. I keep it clutter free. I surround myself with things that I like to look at and that bring me peace, you know what I'm saying? I have my candles, corny or not, I have my little cups with their little sayings and depending on the day, I'll choose a different cup. I also go to church. I spend a total of four hours at church every single Sunday. And I find my peace there. And I'm surrounded by people who help us. And I'm able to get more things done. When I first wake up, I'll typically take 10, 20 minutes to meditate and get ready for the day, ease my mind and let myself know I'm here for a reason. There is something that I am doing today that is going to impact others. And that's really it. Like I really have to focus not on myself, but on things around me and the people around me and the energy around me. I believe only two people have come to my house ever outside of my family. Two people. I protect my peace, baby. I protect my energy. I don't like people coming in. What would I say my biggest challenge is as a young mother? I am still trying to make it to my career. I have financial stresses because I'm not in a career. And the path to my career is a lot less clear. It's a lot more difficult. And that's fine. I have no partner. I have nobody to lean on constantly, every single day, for love to add to my peace, to add to my pockets. This is, it's me, it's me and my baby. So it's hard and that's the biggest struggle, but my main focus is my career, getting to a career and being stable and loving it. What is my biggest reward? Perspective, now things roll right off my back or go completely unnoticed. Like I literally, did you see how she yada yada? Oh, I had no idea, I had no idea. Someone's calling me. Okay. I took my call, sorry. Oh my gosh, the other roar, unmatched joy, unexplainable joy. I don't know if this video has sounded pessimistic, but the thing is, none of what I've said is negative to me. None of it is a reason for me to be upset in this life or anything like that. Like, I am so filled with joy. Not temporary happiness, not surface level feeling. Like, I cannot even describe it. To know I can pour all of my love into her unregrettably, there is just this unmatched joy and drive that I cannot even properly put into words. So somebody commented on a post I made feeding my daughter breakfast for dinner. For about two weeks straight, she would not eat any rice dishes, any noodle dishes, any shrimp any chicken, I'm vegan, she would eat my food, but even when she ate my food, she would hardly eat. So I started just giving her eggs for dinner and a smoothie and things like that. So somebody commented on my flexibility and I have to tell y'all, that is another major aspect in this new life of mine. Cooking an entire meal just for your one and a half year old to not eat any of it, to tell you I'm not eating that. In fewer words, it's kind of like, you not eating it. Well, you gonna do the dishes? What you gonna do that? You gonna cook your own meal? No, you gotta let that roll. And you gotta find out, okay, let me tear this entire house apart. Let me go through everything in my kitchen and find something you will eat, y'all. Flexibility is essential. So thank you for that comment and for your support because, honey, it's a much less stressful way to live your life, too, when you're more flexible and let go of your need to control the details that, at the end of the day, don't matter. Your daughter's fed, right? Your baby's fed, right? Hey, you on to something. Why am I a single mom? Her father made that decision on his own. And I'm in love with my daughter, so I'm a single mother. I do date, but most of it, I don't know what's wrong with me. I always date somebody who lives far from me. Like a 12 hour drive from me. Or a play ride. Just like, there's no way to drive to you. I would have to fly. So, 
I date, but most of it happens over the phone. Mm, it's like we meet once a year. And so I just, I don't have time really to be a good partner. And then like, I don't let everybody I date meet my daughter. So that also really, what am I gonna see? Because I'm not gonna introduce her to, oh, this person, it's like, this person, never mind this person, because for us it's normal. It's normal to date multiple people and feel it out. But that for her is a lot of change. That's a lot of meeting people, trusting them into her space. No one's really ready to be the partner for me. I'm not ready to be a good partner to anybody else. And also, I don't just trust anybody with my daughter. I don't. What is my biggest worry since becoming a mother? This sort of ties into it. My biggest worry, without a doubt, is irreversible damage being done to her. Preventable, irreversible damage. I'm talking kidnapping. I'm talking school shootings. I'm talking physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. These things terrify me. I would lay my life down to prevent that. Trauma. Losing my daughter, that's my biggest fear. I don't care about anything else. This is also why I don't let anyone be alone with her. You know, like, yes, she can meet people. Yes, she can play, have fun. You know, understand how to operate in this world, grow. But no, I don't, she's never had a babysitter. Do people judge me during my pregnancy? Probably, I don't know. I was 19 when I was pregnant. I was 19 when I gave birth. People probably darn sure they judge me, but I didn't pay attention to that. I literally have no idea. A bad word did not hit my ear, or maybe it did and it went out the other one. I was so filled with joy. I was so happy and so sure that this person was my world. I had hundreds of people I knew sending me joy, sending me love, sending me items, you know, sending me encouragement. I had hundreds of people I didn't know sending me the same things. I had a beautiful pregnancy. I got a 4.0 that semester. A what? Uh-huh. A 4.0 that semester? Don't play with me. So people probably did judge. They probably did hate. There were probably some ex-boyfriends of mine or some ex-girlfriends of his. I don't know and I don't care like they could keep that I would never want to know if I did find out I really don't care you're forgiven because I don't care like I hope everybody finds something that makes them so happy that they could not care less what people have to say I don't care the queen of the castle has awakened she brought me books that she reads like 500 times a day can you come here Yuck. Yeah, you tell me. Oh, oh. Oh, please don't do that. It's gonna hurt if you let go. It's gonna hurt if you let go. Come here. All right. And these are the books you wanna read? Me? Read? Okay, that was a little too much energy, baby. You read those three, I'm gonna read this one. Okay. Point at my eyes, so big and wide. She always flips super fast through this book to get to the end of the book, because at the end of the book, there's a mirror. see me in the mirror. The end. Do you want to harvest your food? Mm-hmm. Wow, so yummy. Say yum, 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 yum. She's sleepy still. Yum, 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 yum. yum. Eat it for real, I'm just pretending. Didn't taste good. She's the reason why nothing matters. 
Like, nothing else matters as long as she's good and happy. Right? Little goofy butt, huh, mamas? Thank you! You guys probably didn't see it, but she puckered up her lips to get a kiss. <laughs> My head is pounding. Oh. But I try not to let her know that. Okay. <laughs> Dream big, little one. <laughs> Is that what it says? Oh, oh. Hey, what's going on? What is the issue? Oh, you wanted to sit back so I could have the book? Okay. Dream big, little one. May Jameson went all the way to space. <laughs> that show was in your way. Can you turn the page for me, Papa? Bowman flew her airplane high. Katherine Johnson helped send a man to the moon. Bye bye. You're so sweet. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you all know that. Um, Okay, now that that's done, let's get back to it. There is somebody in my life that I really like and I wish I could pursue it, but I don't have time. So, I used to want to control everything. And it used to be sort of like, if we don't do this, it's the end of the world. If I don't end up having dinner here, it's kind of like would throw me off a little bit. So, let it go of your need to control everything. I set things up so that they can be done the right way. And also, mainly so when things go left I can let I can roll with it I don't have to force it to go right I don't care about being late because I set everything up to leave this house an hour early and either I have extra time yay or I make it one time there's so much flexibility required Fed is better than dead baby okay don't beat yourself up for being flexible mama there's no reason to beat yourself up when do you start putting water into your... Say hi. Say hi. That's enough of that. <laughs> 